into the vending machine business can be a little bit overwhelming when you were first starting out. Obviously, there are tons of places to buy machines from. I'll say from my experience, CandyMachines.com is probably the most popular U.S. supplier, but you can order through um, a smaller U.S. supplier, Krabby Claws, or from overseas, Alibaba, or even Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Sometimes you can find some machines. Now, in our experience, we've been doing this for about a year and a half. We were first starting out and we went out and tried to get some used machines. We didn't really know what to look for. We didn't know what classified a machine as plug and play. All we knew is that we got our first two machines from CandyMachines.com and we were really happy with the condition they came in, the quality they were. Um, and every time we went out to pick up a used machine, we kind of <laughs> shot ourselves in the foot, so to speak, because we realized when we got them home that there were things that we should have looked for that we didn't look for originally. So maybe in the future we'll go ahead and make a video about the things that you should look for in a used vending machine, um, just in case you decide to go that route. But since then, um, I think we've bought eight used machines and every single one of them are being stored in my parents basement at this point <laughs> um, and there's one of them that we do plan to fix up but the rest of them really aren't worth the time um, and that's just a personal preference thing we prefer things to be plug and play ready to go and you know very nice looking when we put them on site so most of the time we don't feel like the time that it takes to fix those machines is worth that extra couple hundred dollars to just buy a machine outright um, but that's just a personal preference if you guys want to get some more information about, I guess, the things that we wish we knew before buying used, we can go ahead and make a video on that. But today we're going to be taking a look at CandyMachines.com's inventory. And the reason why we're looking at this website is because, like I said, I think they are one of the most popular U.S. suppliers for vending machines. Um, they are, you know, the, the supplier we have worked with the most. I love their customer service. They um, actually, when we got our Magic Cut, the owner got on dis on a discord call with us and walked us through the calibration process because we were having a little bit of an issue with that um so we've had a really good experience with them and today i'm going to be going over some of the stock that they have that we would purchase versus some of the ones that we would probably stay away from in the future um we're going to be looking at two different kinds of machines today the two machines that we're most familiar with we're going to be looking at combo vending machines so these are going to be your bulk racks um these are great if you want to get into selling toy capsules or gum or candy or any of that and then we're going to be looking at their crane machines and obviously they have some super popular ones right now like the magic the magic cut and the mini cranes um and even their recent quick play um key catcher they have lots of videos about that on their channel um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the cranes and bull cracks that they have and I'm going to go ahead and point out to you guys a few what I would consider good starting options and this is all coming from you know our experience obviously at this point we have mostly dabbled in bulk product I know some vendors prefer to stay away from that and in the future we plan to transition to claws but it's not because we have an issue with bulk racks we really do enjoy um, servicing them and purchasing product for them and we feel like our profit margins are pretty fair at the price we have them set at so that's something that we really enjoy doing and that's something we plan to continue doing in the future but I do know that some people prefer to stay away from bulk so we're gonna go ahead and cover bulk first and then we'll jump into those cranes so I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys the first two machines we bought the first one that we got was the sticker and tattoo vending machine and the reason that we did that um, is because we wanted something small easy to move and we really knew like from the beginning we really wanted to vend Pokemon cards and at that point um, way back then, we didn't realize anybody else was already doing that, um, so we kind of, you know, that's something we discovered as we got more familiar with others in the community, but at the time, we just thought vending Pokemon cards would be a good idea, and we had a ton of them on hand. We were pretty heavy collectors at the time, since then we've kind of aired more into vending than Pokemon cards, but we knew that we needed some kind of sticker machine to do that, and we started with this. So the other machine that we had gotten originally is actually discontinued, so I'm going to go ahead and go to our YouTube real fast, and I can find the link there, because they do still have like an archived listing on their website. Nice. Okay, so this is the machine that we have at our... Dairy Queen location. This was our one of our first machines, um, and we've done a lot to change it. As you can see, a lot of these don't have labels, yada yada. Um, we've done a lot to make this machine, you know, one of our best um, netting machines. I think there have been months where it has made, you know, $400 on its own before we even put the crane there. So this was definitely what we felt was a pretty good machine. Obviously, we started out with mostly candy on those corners. We slowly transitioned those to toys and switched these out with toy wheels. That is one thing to consider when you are getting 
machines is if it's a candy machine you don't have to stick to just vending candy you can get wheels for those machines and vend whatever you want so our first two machines were this Eagle sticker tattoo machine and this multi-vend machine right here and those are actually still our favorite machines to date and we have played around with a lot of different machines at this point so those two um definitely have stood the test of time and are still in great condition the only thing that i would you know have liked to see in that bigger multi-vend machine is some of those coin drawers that you can actually pull out of the bottom because without a doubt that is our most time consuming machine to empty and when it comes to not only vending candy this is what people would consider like your starter machine from candymachines.com you can see they have two different kinds here you know i don't think there's really too much of a difference between the two of them one thing i will say is this little tray that uh you can put candy in here we actually removed that from all three of these machines we've purchased three of these machines and we found that that tray just collected a lot of dust and made the machine look really gross really fast so we have never used that tray i'm sure there's a lot of practical reason to use that tray but we just didn't like it so we took that tray off of all of them um, these are a great starter machine when you consider the price and you can get different wheels you can actually see here you can add capsule wheels for an extra ten dollars which is not a bad price at all when you consider you know you can have them add them or do it yourself um, these are great small like, little budget machines realistically speaking the profit margins on candy just aren't that great you get slightly higher profit margins from Mike and Ike's and hot tamales I believe it was but in the long term you know you're not looking at super huge profit margins vending candy gumballs are one of the best profit margin items that you can get for candy machines um, but you'll still need those one inch wheels anyways you're looking at about five cents a gumball and a 25 cent return on all of them at the lowest price um, so these are you know a great starter option you can only it looks like do 25 cent mechs on these and from our experience you don't really get a good profit margin on candy at 25 cents um we prefer to vent toys over candies just because they seem to do a little bit better when people have something tangible to take home one inch capsules would do great in these but most one inch toys you're not making a very good profit margin on at 25 cents i think bouncy balls are like an exception but from our experience bouncy balls haven't really done that well um, definitely do your research. This is a great solid machine, but unless you're in a place where candy just does unusually well, you're not going to be seeing a super high return on these. Uh, it's kind of to be expected from a machine like that. Um, nothing wrong with them. We've had three of these. We're really happy with the quality of them and they would stand the test of time for quite a while. Um, we just don't plan to continue to get into these machines anymore. Um, because the profit margins on candy aren't that great and you can't really change the coin mix at least from what I'm gathering to be more profitable so these are a great machine but not really worth the money long term in terms of inventory I would stay away from these bigger racks that only have one type of head on them only because it kind of limits what you are able to sell um, it's really unlikely that you're gonna find 10 super highly desirable one inch capsule items um, some things are always gonna do better than others and we prefer something a little more similar to this right here we actually have this at our um, Chinese buffet location if you've seen any of our videos we have recently picked up this location there was a pretty similar machine um, there when we purchased it off of the other vendor um, but that machine got scrapped because it was not in very good condition and we put this in its place um, you can see you have one inch or candy machines down here and we have switched all of these to one inch we do gum on the outsides and uh, toy explosion and sticky hands on the inside and then you can obviously do a lot with three two inch capsules I think right now we're running the two inch Pokemon figure balls the Rick and Morty keychains and our good stuff mix which just like toy explosion always does phenomenal um, we prefer to get combo machines that have a variety of two inch and one inch products only because we find that our returns on those are a little better obviously we have some products that do a little bit better than others and we like that flexibility where we're not stuck to only one type of product in one location um, i feel like you get a lot more for your money going for a rack like this you're looking at about 728 dollars um, and obviously this one is i mean like three times four times the price um, and you're stuck to one product so maybe in the right location it would do okay but in our experience we prefer to go with something like this um you could even do something kind of similar where it's all still just like one inch capsules or candy machines like this or over here with your four unit one um but we wouldn't do something like this um, we would stick with combo um, speaking of combos we've also used this uh, triple head rack right here this is at our FUD shop location and that location the foot traffic in general just isn't super phenomenal but we are sticking with the guy for a while just because 
He is planning to relocate his shop, and if he relocates his shop to a busier area, we can relocate our machine to a busier area. So we're sticking with him. This was kind of just our foot in the door. Um, this is a great machine, though. This was our first time working with this machine, and we were super, super, super happy with the quality of it. It's just like all the other Rhino machines. Super fantastic quality. Um, and again, I really love that you have a variety here. Right now, we are doing sticky hands toy explosion and good stuff. Um, again, this gives you lots of different options. Of course, you can run gum. We choose not to because it's at a fudge shop and so it's just not the best place to do that. So this has been a fantastic machine. If you're looking for a combo machine a little bit on the smaller side, this is $349. Definitely one of your better budget options um, and it can be a great foot in the door. Um, it, I will say, <laughs> Okay, so these racks here are super, super heavy. Like, I pulled a muscle trying to move one of them with, with somebody else helping me. Um, this was undoubtedly the most awkward machine to move, though. It's very top-heavy, and you definitely will probably want a second person. I got really lucky. Michael's super strong. He could carry it himself, and I wasn't there that day. But, um, yeah, you're going to want a second person to move this one, if at all possible. It's possible to move alone, but it's, it's a lot easier to move with a second person. So taking a look at some of their other combo options, this is kind of a little bit bigger of one of the other machines we were looking at up here. You can see uh, this rack went for $7.28 and this one is going for $12.15, but you get an additional of each head. Um, we probably wouldn't go with something like this, honestly, just because that's where you kind of start airing into the territory of, okay, well, we have a lot of the same size product here unless you want to vend candy, which we don't. That's personal preference. Um, so this is something that's probably a little bit bigger than we'd like to deal with for the fact that it's mostly the same products all across the board. Looking at some of these other options though, this is another decent smaller rack. We have found that two inch capsules and stickers both tend to do well. If we were going to run something like this, we would keep both of these items at a dollar, probably do good stuff on the top, and then Pokemon cards and two different sticker options on the bottom. At $5.49 though, I do feel like it's a little bit steep for what you're getting. Ideally, you know, I would probably stay away from that machine. It's a budget option, but it's definitely not my favorite at all. Um, and then let's see, you also have something kind of similar. This is Eagle brand. Now Eagle and Rhino, we've had good experiences with both of them. They both seem to hold up really well. They're like this generation's Beaver and Northwestern. Um, definitely good machines to go with. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit smaller than the other rack option that I showed you, this five unit vending rack would be a good option. Again, Rhino is a really reliable brand. Um, you have two two inch options and three one inch or candy options down here. Again, I don't want to run candy um, and I would recommend keeping your two inch capsules at a dollar and your one inch capsules at 50 cents. Um, that just future proofs you when things start getting more expensive. Um, obviously you're making a pretty high profit margin at those prices right now, but that may not always be the case and we just like to be a little safe about that. Um, this would be a really good budget option and I feel like it would be a little bit easier to move on your own. One thing that I love that isn't pictured about these machines is the fact that most of them do come with wheels, which is great, <laughs> really a game changer. Um, and that kind of makes it a little bit more realistic for one person to move. But these machines are way heavier than they look. If you don't have like a partner to help you, I'm really lucky to have my fiance to help me with this. If you don't have a partner to help you, find a friend or a family member or somebody to help you move these things because even with wheels, they are pretty heavy. And so the last thing that I'm gonna go ahead and look at, because I didn't see it listed here, but I just thought that this was a good rack option. This is only 609, you have what could be three one inch capsule options down here or candy again if you want to go with candy just not my personal preference um and then your sticker machines up here our sticker machines almost always do better than all of our capsules so stickers are really you know something i recommend getting into especially if you're open to considering vending pokemon cards you can get those over on gumball stuff do not let the um label deceive you you will not get any of these good cards in there it is all common and we just throw some extra cards in from our personal collection. It doesn't seem like it saves you a lot of time, but we have tried going the route of just slaving all of our personal collection, and that's just a lot of work to do. It's taking us hours to get enough for one machine, so definitely um, would prefer to buy something sleeved and just add a couple good cards here and there. Um, we try to go for a one in five hit ratio across all of those, um, and that's about it for uh, bulk machines. Now, bulk is something that a lot of people choose to stay away from, um, and we are just now getting into the crane machine 
and novelty like game machine demographic, I guess. Right now we have two mini claw crane machines out running and we have one magic cut. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with this is go ahead and tell you a little bit about the machines that we have and a few of the machines that we have been looking at. So we try to stay away from these super big machines, the hot stuff and the fun zone and just some of those ones that are a little harder to move. I know that they have wheels, but convenience is a huge thing for us. So we try to stay away from those bigger machines, maybe in the right location we consider them, but those are just a little bigger than we would like to deal with. Um, 31 inches, yeah, but you're just running into some sizes that we're not really interested in. From our experience, the mini cranes have done really well. I think that locker box item really does a lot to help incentivize people to play. Um, that is something that you know, we plan to have more of this kind of style of machine out in the future. We're actually talking to a big grocery store in town about possibly putting one of these in here. And then actually they're on sale right now, which is fantastic. But I think even after like the NIAX and everything, it comes closer to like $1,600. I might be wrong. Another thing that we are looking at, we're talking to Rainy over on Alibaba about getting some of these machines and they come with locker boxes. These are going to be a little bit smaller than those other machines, obviously a little bit more of a tipping hazard. Um, if you guys don't know, people can tip those machines over and try to get prizes out of them. They have some locker boxes though that come with them. I'm not seeing any in the photos here, unfortunately. They have a tower of four locker boxes that stand the same height and go right over here to the side so you can put four keys in here. We plan to, if the keys are universal, just put two keys in at a time so that people can open two of the locker boxes, but not all of them if it gets tipped or something. Um, and we plan to bolt the locker boxes to the machines themselves down here so that hopefully that tipping won't be so much of a hazard. Um, I am very happy to see these have wheels though because I was wondering. So they definitely have some awesome options and you're looking at a much cheaper price. Now the downside is that although these have the cutout for a NIAX from what I have heard, you are looking at no NIAX for about $340. We're hoping to order 10 of these so that will give us a little bit of a discount um, overall. But yeah, you're looking at cash only. One thing I will say, in our experience, most of our sales are coming from cash and card. And so the idea that we won't have an IAX on here right away really doesn't hurt our feelings at all. Um, you know, we know that we are barely, barely, barely making more right now than what we need to run those Niaxes. So to us, it's just not worth that extra cost to run them every month um, if you're hardly making anything from them anyways. Now, obviously, that's going to depend on the location and, you know, what you run and all of that. Um, so it's a little bit, it varies from one person to another. But in the future, we don't plan to go with Niax um, just because it just, it is, unnecessary in most of our locations. If we get one more crane through candy machines, the location we have in mind, we may still go with an IX for this one, but in the future going with the OG minis, we're not going to go out of our way to run credit card readers on those. It's just a lot of extra hassle for very little payback. Um, so let's talk our Magica. Magica, we were really, really excited when this machine first came out. As you can see, it has been discounted. Um, and it is a very unique machine. And these lights, oh my gosh, in person, they are shocking. Like you can even see from this photo, like this photo is not over exaggerating at all. Like it's better than that. Those lights are crazy. I was really happy to see that they reused them on this quick play key catcher. You can't see here, but these, these lights on the sides are pink, not green. Um, I don't know if you can change the setting on those, but I was really happy to see that they reused those lights because those lights are incredible. Um, I really loved the design of the machine. Ours did show up a little bit damaged, but we were able to get a credit sent out for that. Um, so, you know, we're not really worried about that. Um, like I said, their customer service is great. One thing I will say about these machines, though, is that the win-loss ratio is very obvious. Nobody's going to look at $200 worth of product in there and be like, oh, I'm going to win in like three tries because I think most people assume that it's not a skill-based game. Um, and, you know, once you have hit that win ratio, obviously it does become a skill-based game, but those win ratios are preset and it's so that the people that are vending can make their money back um, off of the items that they put in there. Um, but I will say that the obvious win ratio has deterred people from playing. There are ways that people have gotten around this by dropping the price and upping the number of plays it takes for somebody to win. But in the future, we plan to stay away from the Magic Cut. Um, I think we've become less and less inclined to run those bigger prizes and have so many people not get anything out of it um, and then one person get a ton. 
Uh, so this definitely isn't our kind of machine. We were really excited to try something new, but in the future we're staying away from these high win ratio games um, and sticking more with cranes and things that more people get paid out. In terms of other machines that we are looking at, we are wanting to look into getting some of the 22 to 25 inch machines. I thought the quick play key catcher was really awesome. I don't know if we're ever actually going to try this one, but there's a few things I wanted to point out, like the fact that there's color coded keys for each locker. That's fantastic. I mean, obviously it has those fantastic lights. Anything quick play I feel like is going to do really well. They're pretty popular. Um, and there's a lot of people even just from the general public that watch them for entertainment. So I think that's something that could maybe increase plays depending on, you know, where you're located. They have two different coin mechs on here. So if one jams, you still have that other one operating at this point in time with just the two of us to move things. 25 inches even is just a little bit bigger than we're looking at. I think we're airing a little bit more towards these 22 inch spaced out mega treasure cranes. Um, this has been on our list for quite a while now. Um, this is about as big as we would get right now with only the two of us to move things. You have your double coin mech on here still. Um, Nyax reader, nice little prize shoe, and it looks like your dollar bill acceptor in the middle. Um, definitely a cool little design. I like that those draw a little bit more attention than those mini cranes without being super, super big and bulky. Um, now there's lots and lots of other machines that you can get on here. They have some custom claw machines. They have arcade machines. Um, Haw stuff seems to be a pretty popular one, but again, that's kind of airing on the size that's a little bigger than we'd like to get into. It's probably about you know where our interest ends with the cranes. They do have one other machine that I thought was really cool. Um, and it's these electronic bulk vending machines and I'm just going to touch on these briefly. Okay, so obviously we have all of our mini cranes. There's some electronic um, gumball machines. If you watch quick play, you probably have seen some of these super big ones. I'm very interested in this one right here and it is not out yet, um, but it is going to be a bulk sticker machine with room for capsules at the bottom. Looks like two inch capsules at the bottom. And the thing that's interesting to me is it takes those more traditional uh, sticker machines and capsule machines and it turns them into something that all of a sudden can take credit card readers. And like I said, our credit card readers really haven't done much. So I think we're probably still gonna end up getting one of these anyways, just because it feels like the next generation thing. And it's something that I would really like to and give a try. We'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, this one still isn't out yet. Um, it sounds like Galaxy Games is going to be getting one of these and setting them up. So we're probably going to wait and see how that goes for them. Um, I love that they have made it so these slots are just like the perfect size for actual Pokemon cards. Um, that's really different. You don't have to print a big label anymore. Um, and it even gives you the opportunity to do commons on one side and better cards on the other side if you want to. So that whole thing is a very interesting setup. I am excited to see how it all works out and see if some of these other vendors get that out. Um, but overall, that is about where our um, you know, interest in the stock here on CandyMachines.com ends. Um, we have worked with them for quite a while and obviously they have tons and tons and tons of different machines, um, but those are going to be the big ones that we have an interest in, um, at least for our certain genre. Of course, they sell snack and drink machines as well, but we haven't really dabbled in that yet, so we're not going to touch base on that today. Um, in the future, we plan to order from Alibaba and tr we're trying to work with Lifefun. So we will see what kind of machines that they have. We're gonna start with their OG minis and maybe dabble in some of those other ones that they have. Um, but but right now, the, the plan is OG minis. Um, once we have done our order from Alibaba, we plan to make a video kind of going through the entire process, what shipping time took, what the shipping costs. We're kind of breaking things down one step at a time for newer vendors because this is something that we've been wanting to do for a while, but we've kind of aired away from because we were uncertain about a lot of things and there wasn't a lot of clear answers out there. So our plan is to break that down for you guys so that hopefully we can get that information out there for people who are just getting into this. If you guys have anything about the vending business that you'd like us to cover, I'd leave that down below. We are basically covering everything that we wish we knew and everything you guys want to know. The idea is to be completely transparent here and help you get your vending business started so you can enjoy all of the benefits that come with it. Um, it has been really exciting to see where our business has gone in the last year and a half. We've actually been able to cut down a little bit on how much we were working our day jobs just so that we could spend more time working on our business. And our business has been able to sustain that. So it's really awesome to see how much it has grown in just one year. It's not what we were expecting at all. We were expecting things to go a lot slower than they did. And it's actually funny, we talk about this a lot, Every time we tell ourselves that we're going to slow down, we end up finding more locations anyways. And that's why I kind of consider vending to be a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts. Once you start 
that ball is going to keep rolling. So if you have that inclination and that motivation to go out there and do that, there's just, there's really no reason to stop because you're making more than what you're putting in so quickly. Um, and obviously all that depends on location, but um, we have got our foot in the door at some incredible locations and we've gotten some fantastic step ups pretty early into our vending career. Um, we're excited to continue to share that with you guys here on the channel. So if you guys enjoyed this video, go check out our other content and stay tuned for more.